ever get the feeling someone's describing a unicorn, but you're stuck with like donkey maintenance? Uh, yeah, I can see that. That's kind of what we're diving into today. We're talking about managed service providers, MSPs. Right. They're the IT department for businesses that don't have their own, but... Huh. Uh, can be tricky. Yeah, we're going to see why that can feel like you're navigating a minefield, you know? Oh, yeah. Full of unrealistic promises and, well, let's just say interesting management decisions. Interesting is one word for it. We're digging into this article, MSP Madness, Unrealistic Promises, Poor Planning, and the Techs Who Clean Up the Mess. Catchy title. And it delivers, let me tell you. These are real stories from the trenches. Oh, I believe it. The kind that make you really grateful you're not that guy. Yeah, been there. So where does this madness even come from? What's the root of it all? Well, one thing this article points out is this constant kind of like tug of war. Okay. Between the sales team, especially those technical account managers. Hold on. Technical is in quotes there. Are we talking about the salespeople who make a gigabit connection sound like the Starship Enterprise? That's the one. But they wouldn't know a server rack if it jumped out and bit them. You hit the nail on the head. The article calls it the overpromise and underdeliver cycle. Right. Account managers, a lot of times they're incentivized by closing deals. Right. right. Sure. So they might promise these grand migrations like, we'll move your whole server-based system to individual computers. Yeah. But they don't really get the technical limitations. It's like that example in the article with Time Matters. The client wants to slash their Azure bill, which, fair enough, cloud costs, ugh. It can get out of hand. Tell me about it. But here's the picker. They still need this old application. And guess what it runs on? Don't tell me. Azure. Azure. They want to cut their Azure bill, but keep using an Azure-based app. Classic. You want to have your cake and eat it, too. So what's the account manager's brilliant solution? Migrate everything to this Frankenstein's monster of Intune. Oh, no. Teams and SharePoint. You know, Intune, that's Microsoft's thing for managing devices. Right, right. Teams for, well... Teams and SharePoint for files. Okay. Their big idea is to cram a server based application onto individual machines, sprinkle on some Microsoft buzzwords, and call it a day. Wow. That's uh, creative. Even I know that's not how any of this works. Yeah, yeah no. Intune manages devices, Teams is for communication, and SharePoint is for files. None of that magically turns your computer into some kind of server farm. Exactly. They're completely missing how the application's architecture even works. They're ignoring that it needs a central server for, like, processing and data storage. It's fundamental. So who gets to explain this technical impossibility to the client who's already been sold on this dream? Oh, I think we both know the answer to that. The engineers get thrown under the bus again. Yep. Left holding the bag, trying to manage expectations that were never based in reality. Imagine having to tell a client, remember that amazing solution we promised? Yeah, it turns out it violates the laws of physics. Ouch. Talk about an awkward conversation <sighs> and some seriously unhappy clients. And this lack of technical knowledge, it isn't limited to just the account managers, is it? This article talks about how it goes way higher. Oh, absolutely. This is a systemic issue. Hmm. In some MSPs, profit trumps everything. Technical expertise and afterthought. So the engineers are left dealing with these... Consequences. Yeah, consequences of these poorly thought out decisions right. made by people who, frankly... Don't get it. Yeah, they don't get it. And it leads to some truly baffling scenarios. One engineer in here talks about being told to, get this, just copy an application to a user's computer because, and I quote, data. Data. Like, that's the magic word. Right. Like, moving the data alone makes the application work on a completely different setup. It's like saying, my car's out of gas, but I've got a spare tire, so we're good. It's no wonder burnout is so bad in the MSP world. You're constantly putting out fires started by people who should know better. But it sounds like the problems run even deeper than unrealistic promises. It's like they're trying to build, I don't know, a skyscraper on a foundation of popsicle sticks. Exactly. You can only slap on so many band-aids before the whole thing collapses. Yeah. And that's what happens. They don't just make bad promises in the moment. This disregard for technical expertise. Right. It bleeds into how they plan things. Or, well, how they don't plan things. Mm. The article it talks about how some MSPs, they'll preach about efficiency. Sure, sure. Yeah. Who doesn't love efficiency? But then they turn around and prioritize these quick fixes over, you know, the sustainable solutions. Yeah. The stuff that'll actually last. So instead of, like, actually fixing the leaky pipe, they just keep... Patching yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. Patching it over and over again. Yeah. Cheaper in the short term, but... 
eventually you're going to have a bigger mess on your hands. Guaranteed. And this is where those legacy systems, they really come back to bite them. Oh, yeah, the legacy systems. Fun times. The time matters example, actually. Again with time matters, huh? Didn't they already? Yeah. They moved on to Filevine. The client did. New system, all that. Right, right. But they still needed. They still needed the old data. Which, as we've established, Time Matters wasn't exactly designed for a smooth transition to the cloud. Not at all. Plus, they didn't have a support contract anymore. For Time Matters, I mean. Ah, so they're on their own. Completely. Yeah. And the vendor made it clear, no contract, no support. But the account manager, they'd already promised continued access. Right. Here they could just, you know. MacGyver it. Pretty much. Mm. Never mind that the system was, like, ancient built for a completely different era of technology. It's like promising someone a Tesla, but all you've got is a horse and cart. I mean, I guess technically it's transportation. Yeah, not quite what they signed up for. Not even close. Yeah. But that's the pressure these MSPs are under, right? Oh, absolutely. They're constantly pushing clients to migrate to the newer software. Makes sense from a business perspective. Sure. But they don't always think about the complexities. Mm -hmm. The clients, they need that old data, mm -hmm. even if it means relying on these... That, you know, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, exactly. So the engineers end up as like tech archaeologists. That's a good way to put it. Trying to keep these ancient systems running without the proper tools, without support. One wrong move away from total system meltdown. I'd be stressed. The article quotes one engineer, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they basically said, I feel like I'm constantly digging myself out of a hole, and then someone throws another shovel full of dirt on my head. Oof. Yeah, I get that. That's vivid. It really captures the pressure, you yeah. know, the frustration, that disconnect between the promises and reality. And it all goes back to that lack of respect for technical expertise. 100%. Mm. In too many MSPs, that expertise is an afterthought. And it creates this awful cycle. Engineers are overworked. They're underappreciated. Clients are unhappy because what was promised never materializes. And the MSP's reputation takes a nosedive. Mm, exactly. Lose-lose for everyone. Depressing, but yeah, it can't be all bad, right? There have to be some MSPs out there that have got this figured out. Oh, for sure. The article's not all doom and gloom. There are plenty of MSPs that understand. They value technical expertise. They set realistic expectations from the start. So how do you know the difference? How do you spot the train wrecks in the making? versus the ones that are actually good to work for? What are the signs? So how do you know the difference? How do you spot the train wrecks in the making versus the ones that are actually good to work for? What are the signs? Well, the article, it points out a few things. First off, accountability. Okay. It's yeah. got to be there. Account managers, they should be responsible for the promises they make. Right. And there needs to be a system to make sure someone's looking at the technical side, yeah. you know? before anything gets signed. Makes sense. Like checking if you actually have all the ingredients before you promise someone a five course meal, mm -hmm. not just winging it. Exactly. And that kind of leads into the next thing. You gotta involve engineers early on. Oh, I like this. <laughs> so instead of being brought in to clean up the mess. Right. They were part of the conversation from the get go. They get to be the voice of reason. You know, the ones whispering, ah, maybe don't promise them a rocket ship when we can barely build a bicycle. Exactly. Having engineers there at the table, it's a reality check. Yeah. It means everyone's on the same page about what's actually possible. Setting those realistic expectations right from the start. Which is better for everyone in the long run. The client, the MSP. For sure. It seems so simple, but I guess some companies just don't get it. That a little preventative maintenance goes a long way. Some places, they're so busy chasing the next deal, they forget about the bigger picture. Building trust. Yeah, it's about the long game, isn't it? It is. Honesty, transparency, mm -hmm. those things matter mm -hmm. more than some flashy promise you can't keep. Absolutely. So accountability, early engineer involvement. Yeah. Anything else? This might seem obvious, but yeah. continuous learning. The sales team, the account managers, they should have at least a basic understanding of the tech they're selling. So no more promising clients the moon when all they need is a stepladder. Exactly. And on the flip side, respect for expertise has to go both ways. When an engineer raises a red flag, management actually listens. They don't just steamroll right over them. No way. You want a place where everyone feels heard, valued. So it's not enough to just have these brilliant tech minds. You have to. Create an environment where they can thrive. Right. And I imagine giving them the space to actually focus on what they're good at is pretty important. 
huge. Engineers, they're problem solvers. They're not salespeople. They're not customer service reps. Let them do what they do best and everyone wins. It sounds like working for or with an MSP doesn't have to be a nightmare. Not at all. There are good ones out there. You just have to know what to look for. Ask the right questions. Absolutely. If you're considering the MSP world, don't be afraid to dig deeper. What's their company culture like? How do they approach technical challenges? Do they value their engineers? Do they prioritize ethical, sustainable solutions? These are all great questions. Important ones. Yeah. It's your career, you know? You deserve to be in a place that values you and your expertise. Couldn't agree more. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive into the wild world of MSPs. Remember, a little bit of awareness and the right questions can make all the difference. Until next time, keep asking those tough questions and diving deeper into the fascinating world of technology.